Hello, I'm Gabor Todt from Austria and we are here with Tom Johnson from UK and Fabio Mangiacapra from Italy. Tom, bifurcation is always a hot topic, especially from young practitioners. What is your suggestion? How do you see, what is the technique that all the young practitioners should be familiar with? So cl clearly two stent techniques cause some um, concern and interest for, for the young practitioners. Um, I think it's first very important to highlight that the provisional approach remains the, the mainstay of bifurcation treatment. Uh, having said that though, where you know, it may be appropriate in 95% of cases, there still is the need to convert. We see from the trial data that maybe in 5-10% to 10 of patients there's the need to convert to a two-stent technique. And beyond that, then, there are clearly certain elements uh, to the anatomy, to the lesion, to the patient that require us to also consider two-stent techniques up front. We can agree that it's also important to be familiar with one of the two-stent strategies. Fabio, what is your suggestion? Which two-stent strategy we should use or we should recommend to the young practitioners to get familiar with? Well, among the two stand strategies, for sure, there are some a little simpler, other more cumbersome. But I think the most important thing is to focus probably on one of them, one or two of them, and then practice and practice in order to get confident. It's better to know one for good than all of them, but without much confidence. I have to say, in most cases, tap technique uh, would probably do the job. And if I had to choose, in my clinical practice, the second one that I would choose is culotte technique. Tom, you are expert in imaging. Do you think for, you, for treating bifurcations, is it a must to have imaging tools on board? So I, I don't think we're yet a, at a position where we can say it's a must. I think it gives incredibly valuable insights into what we're trying to achieve in optimizing the results from bifurcation stenting. In my practice, I use imaging for bifurcation very commonly, not in every case, but in many cases. And I use it for a series of reasons. So it allows me to effectively assess the lesion I'm going to treat and hopefully then select the appropriate stent, both size and length. Beyond that, then it will also enable us to effectively achieve optimization. Uh, we've already discussed the fact that we should be familiar with maybe one technique. There are certain elements of a bifurcation procedure which are uh, to be used in every technique. So pro proximal optimization, uh, the attempt for us to cross distal of a bifurcation with a wire uh, to undertake high pressure sequential kissing. And OCT uh, certainly is my favorite imaging uh, modality, gives us really very high resolution uh, information in terms of all of those aspects, achieving apposition, achieving effective cross of my wire, optimizing the bifurcation both in a single and in a, in a two stent technique. So imaging might show us details that we can easily oversee by, by pure NGO, I agree. And Fabio, how do you see, a, is there a role for functional assessment in the treatment of bifurcations? Yeah, well, I think there is uh, definitely uh, room for a functional assessment, especially uh, for the assessment of side branches. And in particular, in my opinion, uh, when you first put a stent in the main branch, and you're not quite sure the rest of the side branch is free of disease or involved in the disease and needs to be treated. Well, that is some condition where putting a wire, a pressure wire in the side branch can really make your procedure change. And just that, it tells you whether a second step needs to be um, uh, put in place or not. And actually, this is also what comes out of the studies using FFR in uh, bifurcation lesions. And we know that sometimes in geography, tends to um, overestimate uh, the degree of stenosis at the ostium of side branch. And in those cases, FFR can really make you feel sure that the side branch will not suffer even though a stent falls in front of it. Thank you. It was really useful comment and opinion. I think we can say that knowing at least one of the complex double stent technique is crucial because there are at least 5 to 10 percent of the cases when we have to apply this but we have to be the most uh, familiar with the uh, provisional T-stenting, single stent strategy, because this is what's used for the vast majority of the cases. But I would like to just make a quotation from Goran Stankovic who say that provisional T-stenting is not a single stent technique, but it's a philosophy. 
with the idea that you might be able to solve the case with one stent, but you have also the chance to complete it for a more complex stenting procedure. Thank you for your comments. Thanks, Thank you.